So with that, uh, I'm, I'm willing to answer any questions. I know Dr. Johnson is willing to answer any questions regarding student services at this time. Chris. I'd like to know how students come to the Options Center. Good question. We started the, the Options Program, the students, we started with initially 82 students. And students were, it was a, two programs that, well, one program that was collapsed. It was a Success Connections program where students went to school uh, from four to six in the evening over the last few years at High High. They collapsed the, the Success Connections program into the Options program. And we had many students that were opting to go to North Coast in which we were paying tuition to an outside agency that's ran by the county uh, that has a similar program online curriculum. And we received a lot of those students back, okay? So those were the students that we started with initially. Uh, each quarter, there is an application process in which we just receive 20 brand new students, okay, um, at the start of November. Uh, so it, from this point on, we started with a, with, a, with a specific cohort. Now there's an application process in order to get into the, into the options program. Uh, and we're servicing students that, that are credit deficient. That's our primary purpose. Uh, but ultimately, the options program will be a school of choice in the district for all students. And that will be coming in the coming year. That will be here in the coming years. Um, because it just provides choice for students uh, working on the online curriculum at their own pace. And so we, we, we accept our, our second cohort of students. We, applications are due in by December 23rd. Uh, and then we will enroll new students uh, at the end of the semester. So once a student enters the option program, the expectation is they'll stay in it through graduation? They, they have a choice. So a student that enrolls in the options program, they're there because they're credit deficient. If they demonstrate success and they get caught up on their credits, they have a choice to return back to Heights High or remain in the, the options program and graduate from the options program, which is with a, a Heights High diploma. So the students have that choice. Now, I'm glad you asked that question because at the beginning of the year, students came in and said, oh, how long do I have to stay here? Okay, because when I get my credits together, I'm, I'm going back to Heights High. Okay, nothing against Heights High at all. No way. But students that have been there, we took a poll at the end of the first quarter for students that were interested in leaving at the semester if they had the opportunity to, and we had one out of 80. So in many ways, they appreciate the sort of approach. It is a smaller environment. Um, uh, and it is a gentle approach in, in a very nurturing environment uh, that helps support their success. Have you managed to manage it in a half day? How do you say they attend for a half day? How do we manage it? Yeah, I mean, the curriculum um, requirements and so forth. Students are, uh, we're a one-to-one -one district, so all students have their own personal laptop, okay? So they are here with us for two hours and 45 minutes a day. Um, many of our students are in other programs in which they work in the, after, in the, in the evening, uh, but they are also expected to work at home. So during the time that they are not in school, if they're not in the morning session in the morning, their expectation is that they are working on their curriculum at home and we can monitor them on, the, on, and during, on their curriculum using the Moodle platform. So we can tell when students are on, when they're not on, how long they've been on. So if they're not in the morning session, they're working at home in the afternoon. They're not in the afternoon session, they're working, they're working in the morning. Okay. So it isn't just about being here. Yeah, here, what we, what we provide here is um, a blended instruction approach. So a blended instruction approach is that we have certified teachers that are here that can assist them um, in small groups and large groups because students are also expected to pass the, um, not re expected, responsible for passing the OGT as well. So we have OGT prep, which oftentimes we pull those students out in larger groups and get them prepared for passing the OGT test. You need two things to graduate. Pass all your sections of your OGT and achieve at least 20 credits of the academic curriculum. Joe? I just want to say, I know a lot of this is a comment, but for the Tiger Pledge, Yep. For some people, it might seem silly or, I mean, I'm not, not significant, but I found um, as a parent that 
it's um, a really nice tool for when my son is telling me about a situation at school um, that might not be bullying, but it's not, um, it, it's not behavior that fits with the Tiger Pledge, and it gave me words to use to give to him. Very simple. He could say if a friend's not is, is treating someone else badly, or even him, you know, you're breaking the Tiger Pledge. That's that that's not that doesn't fit with the Tiger Pledge, and um, or and even I was able to talk to him about bullying, whereas I might not have before. And he just told me a story about how one child was calling another child a scaredy cat repeatedly, and, and he went up to them and whispered and said. That's kind of like bullying, you know. Um, and he's only in first grade, so I'm just happy. And we even have the pledge posted in our kitchen, and he can recite it. You know, he what did he he read it out loud, and um, I just think it's for me, it's been a helpful, useful tool, and I think it it can be profound. That's great, that's great for you. Um, so when you say that the options complex is going to be used for as a school of choice. Is that for that same targeted school, uh, population, or are you opening it up for acceleration? Or, I mean, what, in, in offering it as a school of choice, for who? The latter part of what you said. It will be a school of choice for all students that could benefit, that will work best in a setting that provides them choice and self pace for accelerated students uh, as well. Right now, we're targeting students that are recovering credits. In the future, it will be offered as a school of choice for all students. Ms. Rez. Is, is it the expectation if we are doing credit recovery, do we see ourselves as maybe expanding and catching kids as they come into high school, coming out of eighth grade, maybe catching them in the summertime and getting them caught ahead? up? Yeah. Yeah, we've, we have, we've talked. Um, significantly about how we can better prepare um, our students when they're coming into that ninth grade year. Um, whether it's uh, a bridge program or something along those lines that occurs in the summer. Um, but looking at that summertime as a way to, to maximize, we, we, we did some things in the past where we moved some of the summer programming closer to the start of the school year um, so that the instruction was, was uh, more um, recent when they started the school year and those kind of and we thought that was those were very positive. So we have a predictive model. Can we predict the eighth graders that are going to have trouble with credits? I think if you we have a counselor watch program. So when you when you have our counselors who are having conversations, high school and middle school counselors who are having conversations, are, are clearly able to identify you know those students that are at risk for struggling in the in the, the freshman year. So you know and what we've tried to do. Um, to catch that is, in addition to the options program, which is more of a, a, of a placement, um, within the high school and within our middle schools, we've introduced what are called opportunity labs. And they're also um, exposure to online instructional curriculum that is in addition to the core. So the way that that works is, you know, they're, they're getting their core instruction in a, in a reading or math area. But then if they are still struggling, they can be um, engaged in the opportunity lab, which gives them more instruction in, in an area of reading and math. So it's an additional intervention. And the exciting development about that this year um, is that um, we've, we've gotten better at aligning, gotten better at selecting the, the, the right curriculum, um, and are starting to see better results with that form of intervention. And we just met with our middle school administrators uh, this past week to talk about that. Um, so. You know, ultimately, where we want to get is a place where you're not putting in place a bunch of interventions. You know, ultimately, where you want to be is where the interventions are uh, not the, the rule, but the true exception. And when you look at the, uh, the information that was provided tonight around this idea of a student assistance team and the pyramid of support, um, you should have a, a smaller portion of your population, 15%, 20% at the most, who are engaged in those interventions. That's where we need to get um, as a district across the board. So we're using the idea of blended learning, we're using technology, we're using the laptops to try to engage our kids in different learning environments, both at the middle and the high school level. I, I should mention that part of the options program um, is also an alternative to expulsion classroom that Mr. Williams runs as well. 
um, where we have students who are engaged in the expulsion process um, and instead of having them out of school uh, for a period of time, we have, you know, and, and it's not for all students, um, you, you must take into account the, the offense and the safety matters and those kinds of things, but a, a classroom is put in place um, to help students on a conditional basis stay engaged in their learning um, so that when they return back to their school, um, they return back to their school having been in a learning environment. Um, you know, oftentimes students who are involved in those incidents um, can't afford to, to miss more instruction. So um, our superintendent is, is truly committed um, not only to choice and to developing pathways and interests and area of interest, you know, for all students, but he also understands um, that you need alternatives. And, and that's, a, that's an important component. 